What is up guys, From Sea to Stone here, and in this episode I'll be covering the entire vegetative stage for my 6 plant photo period grow. I'll go over some of the simplest yet most effective ways to train a cannabis garden to maximize its potential, as well as dive into nutrients, watering, as well as pest prevention. We will see the garden totally transform in this video, so stay tuned. When I first started growing, I didn't have many expectations of what I wanted out of each cycle. In fact, just keeping my plants alive all the way through flower was an accomplishment in itself. It wasn't until I had a few grows under my belt that I really started exploring and testing different plant training methods in order to achieve better harvest results. I've tested everything from low stress training, mainlining, topping, as well as a handful of other techniques. I'll be showing you guys hands down one of the easiest ways to train a cannabis plant to not only get an edge to edge canopy, but also also focusing on a faster veg flip, meaning less time to complete the grow overall. Before we start, I would urge anyone who missed the previous episode or anyone who might want a refresher to pause this video and watch episode 1 of season 6 as it's going to greatly tie into what I do in this video. In the last episode I covered propagation, transplant, as well as starting this season's pheno hunt. I also want to thank everyone who hits the like button and is dropping a comment for the YouTube algorithm. YouTube's still been throttling all forms of cannabis related content, so if you're looking to support the channel, one of the best ways is by dropping a like, posting a comment, or sharing this video to your friends. We last left off with me transplanting my six sherbet cookie plants into their finishing pots. Although a small bit of transplant shock was apparent, after a few days the plants were perked right back up and are now ready for their first bit of training. To start their training, I'll be topping each of the plants. Topping is the process of removing the top of the main stem, which in turn causes the plant to divert its energy into the lower shoots, while also creating two main stems towards the top of the plant. This is a great way to bush out your plants with minimal effort, creating a flood of new tops, which will eventually become colas later on in flower. In addition to wanting more tops, I'm also topping in order to create more branches for me to take my clippings from when it comes time to starting my mother plants. The process itself is very straightforward forward and easy to accomplish. I start by identifying the main stem and then taking a sterilized pair of scissors I remove the stem right above the two growth tips. In most cases you'll top directly at the highest point of the cannabis plant, but for a few of my gals that have stretched up taller than the rest, I did a slightly more aggressive topping in hopes to let the smaller plants catch up to the rest. This will have the same effect as long as I leave the two growth tips untouched. Over the next week or so, these two growth tips will turn into two new main tops, and the branches located below these growth tips will also start to bush out and grow even more as the plant naturally diverts its energy. One thing cool about this shot is you can actually see a few pistils sticking up from the growth site, which is an indicator that the plant is indeed a female. Looking at a few of the plants though, I did notice a few of the lower leaves starting to turn yellow. This is an indication that the plant is now ready for some food. Up to this point, I've given them soft tap water as my soil comes pre-packed to carry the plants for the first few weeks of life, but as they work on those nutrients built up into the soil, I'll inevitably have to start feeding. On this run, I ended up testing out some nutrients by Dutch Pro. They've been in the game for quite some time now, and I was thrilled when they sent me a few starter kits for testing. Their kit comprises of a base A plus B for veg, as well as a base A plus B for bloom. They also include a root additive, a multi-nutrient optimizer, as well as a bud booster for flower. Because this will be my first time trying these newts out, I opted to only use both A and Bs plus the Bud Booster to keep things a little simpler. Anytime I try a new product line, I always tend to keep it fairly basic and then add more once I get a decent understanding on the product line itself. You'll find later in this episode there is a bit of a learning curve when using this lineup despite the schedules provided directly from the manufacturer. I'll leave links to Dutch Pro and all the other products that I use in this video in the description. 
To start, I first mixed Grow Solution A and then Grow Solution B. They recommended 850 to 1100 ppms for early to mid veg, and that seemed a tad bit high for my liking, so I decided to try my first feed at a half strength, bringing my ppms to around 500 after pHing the feed down to 6.4. When watering in soil, and especially in veg, I rarely water till runoff. Instead, I first pick up my pots before watering to see how light they are, and after giving them some feed, I'll pick them back up again to make sure that they are decently heavy. This is a great method for growers to use while trying to find out when it's time to water and ensuring that you're not overwatering your plants. This will in turn create much stronger root balls and healthier roots overall. Fast forwarding a week, it's apparent that these ladies have responded well to their topping. Not only have they created two new main tops, but have also bushed out a ton. For this grow in specific, I wanted to focus on flipping the canopy faster so I could see the traits of each pheno and flower before deciding on which mother I was going to ultimately keep. Because of this, I went with a fairly simple, less labor intensive route for training. Even just topping once has completely altered the plant's appearances, which goes to show just how effective topping actually is. You can use a method like low stress training to achieve a similar result, but I typically just use that method with auto flowers as it's less stressful on the plant, but I found that it isn't always necessary with photo periods as you can give them the time they need to recover, which isn't much. You can also achieve the same if not better results in half the time. Looking over the top of the canopy, I'm starting to see an issue arise in the tent. That issue is some slight yellowing at the tips of the uppermost canopy. Now it doesn't look like nutrient burn to me, as the color is a vibrant yellow and I don't see any of the tips actually burning. Initially I thought it might have been a VPD issue, as previous readings of my leaf surface temperature were a bit too cold compared to my room's relative humidity. After chatting with a few growers on the issue, it was suggested that it could be a potassium deficiency, as the leaf tips were starting to curl which was considered consistent with other examples found online. Dutch Pros Explode has a healthy amount of potassium in it, so I opted to give it a 250 ppm watering just of that solution in hopes to combat the issue. Dutch Pro has potassium within the Grow A plus B mix, however one thing I'm learning about this lineup is it's super nitrogen heavy. Even the CalMag has nitrogen in it. Because it's so nitrogen heavy, even when feeding half strength every three waterings, I still developed very early signs of nitrogen toxicity as noted by their leaf's dark green color. Because I wasn't feeding as much A plus B, my suspicion was it wasn't getting the potassium that it needed. In trying to fix one issue, it caused another. At the end of the day, that's why I'm a huge advocator for ditching schedules, understanding what the plant needs per stage, and a general guide to PPM when feeding. It's also really important to familiarize yourself with common signs of deficiencies and toxicities as the plants will tell you more than a schedule ever will. Now that we have the issue taken care of, it was time to strip the plants of its lower leaves and offshoots, and at the same time, taking my cuttings for the pheno hunt. Because I was left with so much content regarding the cloning process, I opted to not include it into this video to keep it more specific to the training and the veg stage. However, I will be releasing a complete start to finish guide on the cloning process in my next video, which will be released in the next week or two. But essentially, after taking my cuttings from each plant, I continue to strip all the lower growth off, which will better conserve the plant energy into its main tops and not its small underexposed offshoots that will most likely produce larf come time to harvest. Don't be afraid to get in there and strip the plant. It's been my experience that less is more when it comes time to leaf stripping. I leave two to three sets of fan leaves for each top and everything under that gets removed. After each plant was stripped, I proceeded to move them back into my tent and install my scrog net. A scrog net is by far one of the easiest and most foolproof ways of managing a canopy. Remember, up to this point, I've only topped once, and outside of the leaf stripping that I just did, these ladies haven't had any other interference. 
I set my scrog net at the height of my shortest tops and any top that's taller gets gently weaved back into the net, bending the tops at nearly a 90 degree angle. While I'm looking for an overall even canopy in terms of height by the time I finish tucking, I'm also looking to spread the canopy out to parts of the tent that aren't all the way filled in yet. By the time I finish, my grow looks pretty mangled. Tops twisted, overturned, and fan leaves trying to peek up towards the light. But not only 24 hours later, these tops will continue to grow upwards, leaving you with a much more consistent canopy than the time you started. Over the next week or so, I'll continually train the tallest tops down and carefully weave them into the net in order to have as even as a canopy as I can. It only takes a few minutes per day to do so, and I find the process really enjoyable. Some tops can tend to give you a good fight, but with a little persistence, you can wrangle them down no problem. The canopy is now essentially ready for flower, but there is one last thing that I like to do right before I flip their light schedule to 12-12, and that, my friends, is applying some form of pest prevention. I'll be using some organicide diluted to the manufacturer's recommendation and spraying right before lights off. It's important to spray the solution close to lights off as organicide is fairly oily, and when sprayed on the leaves can actually burn them under direct light. Spraying right before lights off allows the solution to dry completely while the lights are off, leaving you with a nice looking canopy come the next morning. In addition to spraying the top of the canopy, I also spray the undersides of the leaves, branches, as well as apply a very small coating to the top of the soil directly. I've used organicide for years now, and I've never had an issue with pests, but remember, prevention is key. I would always recommend spraying during veg, as I'm not an advocate for spraying any sort of pesticide once flowering is actually commenced. I can't I can't tell you how many growers I see coming to me with pest issues that would have been quickly resolved by just applying a pesticide during veg. I would not skip out on this part. To induce flowering, I need to set my digital timer to turn on at 7 a.m. and shut off at 7 p.m. The times themselves don't really matter and you can set it to whatever you want, you just want the lights on for 12 hours and off for 12 hours, which is what photo period plants require to start flowering. And that's pretty much everything I did to prepare this grow for flower. We're left with a pretty consistent and even canopy considering the incredibly fast veg on these gals and the very minimal effort that I put into actually creating it. This was one of my first times going super relaxed on the veg training, and it goes to show that even with a little bit of effort, you can achieve a well-spread, consistent canopy in a short amount of time. The ladies have seemed to bounce back well from their potassium deficiency as well, and now that I have a better grasp on the newts, they are boasting a very healthy color and are looking nice and perky. I was left with a lot more tops than I initially expected, so I'm guessing we're going to have a solid pull from this grow. The next time you see this canopy, it will be in the middle of flower, hopefully stacking on some nice resinous buds. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, and if you want to see more, consider subscribing. Huge shout out to everyone who's been joining the Patreon, as without your guys' support, this series wouldn't be possible. If you guys are interested in supporting, please consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash from seed to stone. Some of the tiers offer some awesome perks, including one-on-one -on -one chats. If you're looking to stay updated on the series and want to get involved with a large growing community that offers a ton of really solid information, please check out our community discord which I'll have linked in the video's description. I can't wait to see you in the next video, and as always guys, happy growing!